In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to SPSS and PASW. So first off, let me just say that regarding the name, SPSS, PASW, two different names for the same program. And I'm going to refer to it as SPSS. Now I'm working on version 18, which is, should be basically the same as slightly older and slightly newer versions. And uh, let me just say, this introduction is more for people who've had little to no experience with SPSS. In future videos, things will get more advanced. So first off, what is SPSS? Uh, well, it's a pretty popular program for statistical analysis. It's used most often in the behavioral sciences, like psychology, but it can do lots of different things, and it works well for lots of different fields. And it's great because you can do really complex statistical analyses with just a few mouse clicks. But the downside is that you're pretty far removed from the actual calculations. For that reason, these videos are going to focus mostly on just how to use SPSS. Uh, if you want more of a conceptual explanation of the different statistical procedures, I recommend you check out my other series of videos, Excel for Statistics. Now, a few caveats about SPSS. Like I said, it's pretty easy to run analyses, but your data has to be set up in just the right way. And when you do run the analyses, you often get a lot more than you need in the output window. So a trick to using this program is knowing where to look for relevant information. So let's start with the basics. There are two view modes to SPSS. There's data view and variable view. Data view, which we're in right now, is basically just a spreadsheet. And this is where you see all your data, and this is where you enter in all your data. Each row is de dedicated to one participant or subject or case. And uh, each column is dedicated to a different variable or type of measurement you're taking from each one of the participants. So just try popping in some numbers. I'll just do one, two, three. Uh, you'll see that as you enter in a number in a column, that column kind of comes to life. The variable automatically gets named, and its properties are set by default. However, notice the uh, name is VAR00001. That stands for variable one. If you type in more numbers, more property or more variables will get defined, and their default names will be variable two, variable three, variable four. This can get kind of confusing, especially if you have lots of variables and they're all named exact, almost exactly the same thing. And also, the, the default properties for each variable may not be exactly what you want, so we should learn how to change some of those things. So we change them in variable view, and you can get to that just by clicking on that little button in the lower left. Um, this lists all your variables in rows, and all the properties are in columns. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete variable 2 because we don't need that right now. The first property, and probably one of the more important ones, is name. I recommend you change this immediately to something more descriptive. You can call it anything you want, and but it just, it just can't have spaces in it, uh, special characters, and it can't start with a number. So just double click on that and just highlight it. You can change it to something. Uh, you don't need to worry about what it does and doesn't allow, because if you do something it doesn't like, like having a space, if you hit enter, it'll say variable names, if variable contains an illegal character. So just try something else. I'll try random underscore name. Camel case works equally well. So now we have a slightly more descriptive name, which will help us differentiate our different variables. Um, if you want something even more descriptive, you can go over here to label, and here you can call it literally anything you want. There's no restrictions on what you call it. Um, when you run analyses, this name will show up in the output window. Um, it's not going to show up in data view. In data view, you just have whatever the name is. Um, but the label will show up in the output window, which can help you further differentiate between your different variables. So, uh, another important property is type. Uh, type reflects what kind of data you're dealing with. The default is numeric, which indicates you're dealing with numbers. You can also change this to uh, dates, if you're recording dates, or dollar amounts, or a string variable, which is basically letters or words. And honestly, for the most part, if you're analyzing data, I think numeric will be okay for most of what you're doing. And probably only the other type of property you need to worry about right now is measure, which is over on the right. 
Now, uh, this specifies what scale of measurement you're using. A stats book will usually tell you that the uh, four scales of measurement are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I recommend you just find a stats book and, and read about it. Uh, the only thing I'll say about it right now is that SPSS, in SPSS, nominal means nominal, ordinal means ordinal. But if you're dealing with interval or ratio scales, SPSS has the same setting for both those. It calls them both scale. And for the most part, you'll be okay leaving this set to scale. Um, I'll quickly mention some of the other properties. Width, over here on the left. Uh, this specifies how wide or narrow your, your column will be. Uh, or sorry, how wide or narrow uh, the entries can be if you're dealing with string variables. Which we're not, so we can just forget about that. Decimals uh, specifies how many decimal places will show. Column. That's what specifies how wide or narrow your columns will be in data view. I find it kind of redundant, though, because you can just modify that in data view with your cursor. Just moving it around like that. So not too necessary. Um, a line right here. Uh, it just left justifies, right justifies, or center justifies the numbers in each cell in the spreadsheet in data view. Just the same way that Excel or Microsoft Word would do. And for the most part, I leave these at default. There are some other properties like values and missing, which can be pretty useful. There's also a role over here on the right. Uh, we'll get to those in later videos. For now, don't worry about them. So when you're dealing with SPSS, you're pretty much just switching back and forth between variable view and data view. Um, you can also get to variable view from data view just by clicking on the variable name. It'll take you right back there. And you can get back to that of you by clicking on each, uh, each row of the variable. So uh, that's pretty much the basics of SPSS in terms of at least navigating and what everything is. In the next video, we'll start plugging in numbers and running some calculations.